Today we are in the Renishaw testing lab for tuned mass damping of the new Fortis enclosed encoders. Cory, um, can you tell me what's going on? What, what are we looking at here? Okay, so what we've done here is um, in the Fortis encoder, there was three things that market research told us to look into. So the first one is they're, they're really hard to install. The second one is that they always leak. And the third point is that people said to us, you know, you shake them a little bit and they fall apart. And so what we're talking about today is that third point about how we've overcome the sensitivity of these uh, linear scales to vibration. So you're shaking them a lot today. <laughs> yeah, definitely, <laughs> definitely. Talk, talk us through the test. What, what test is it? What kind of G are you testing them to? Um, and what are you looking for in this test? Yeah, so today what we've done is uh, a test where we've uh, tested what's known as a sine sweep. So it's a, a sinusoidal sweep from 50 hertz up to 2000 hertz. Today we did the, ran that test at 37G. In the past we've actually taken it up to twice that level, so 75G, but it's a square law, so you're actually talking about four times the amount of energy in, involved at, at that upper level. Um, so that's the kind of test that we've been doing in here. So we do the full frequency spectrum. We don't remove a certain frequency or anything like that. We are actually getting the full actual response of the encoder for that entire range. 75G, is, mm -hmm. is this an overkill? Well, the, the thing is, what I'm looking for is there's, there's a couple of things there. The first one is I want to be confident. If I'm quoting 30G in my, my literature, I don't want it to be falling over at 31G. So I'm proving that this encoder is good for the entire range. It's basically anything you throw at it, you're not gonna break it. So that's the, the, the kind of thing that I'm, I'm trying to achieve here. Now, people will say to me, yeah, but you're never gonna get to those levels inside a machine tool. Well, what we're doing is covering the circumstance where someone's got the wrong tool in the tool holder, um, or maybe they've set a setting completely wrong, and a factor of 10, in, uh, error in, in a setting. And so these are the circumstances where people can get, for a short, very short period of time before the machine reacts, um, a very high level of vibration. We want to make sure that under those conditions, this encoder is not going to get broken. So there may be other things that are damaged inside the machine, but you're not going to have to be pay, paying out for replacement encoders under those circumstances. Can you give me a real life example of how this would work? Yeah, sure. So in its, you know, a more common kind of application scenario is when you're doing um, machining, so interrupted cuts, where you're cutting from metal to air to metal to air, or if you're doing things like high-speed machining of aluminium, you generate a lot of vibration at frequencies which are really bad for the traditional encoders. So especially the narrow cross-section versions, they're, they're liable to kind of resonate at those frequencies. There's a lot of parts inside there, so springs and couplings on those wheeled carriages which uh, react to that frequency, whereas we've completely done away with that inside our encoder. This is a non-contact encoder, plus we've uh, built in tune mass dampers into the reed head as well to absorb the vibration at the natural frequency of the encoder. So it means that air, uh, vibrations that used to couple into the control loop now are damped within that encoder. And having this information, how valuable is this to a machinist that's looking to machine to microns? You, you will probably find that people will have come across circumstances where they've carried out some, a machine operation, they look at the first part they've made, they're not satisfied with the quality of the finish that they, they've achieved. And naturally, someone's going to think, ah, it's just a limitation of the machine. And so they, they might be doing something like a fly cut over a piece of aluminium. Um, in that case, they would say, okay, rather than a 100 millimeter tool, I'm going to move to a 75 millimeter tool, and I'm going to change the feeds and speeds accordingly. But that may end up um, removing the, the resonance from the, the frequency which is going to affect the encoder, but what you've done there is you've, you're just going to take longer to, to machine that part. Whereas that, that machinist may not have ever thought, okay, this is a, a natural frequency of the encoder, but here it is right there is a, a way to remove that that problem from your machine. So that, that machine was probably perfectly capable of doing that cut in the original set of conditions which were programmed into it, and it was the, the linear scale was the thing which was holding the, 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 whole, the whole machine back. So effectively, hmm. it's enabling the machine tool user to use the machine tool to its full capabilities, yeah. hmm. um, and also giving 
um, the machine tool user the confidence that the encoder is going to have the longevity that it mm. requires, especially in some of these automated applications yeah. Um, nowadays. Yeah, exactly. The, uh, one of the things we we come across is, you know, with the uh, with the traditional encoders, what they would have is just intermittent e stops. So you, you can have an automated process which is meant to be running lights out, and just maybe several times a week you could have an e-stop which is occurring. And we've actually come across a scenario like that with uh, an end user was, was suffering that problem. Um, and then the machine builder swapped out the encoders from the competitor encoder to the Renishaw Fortis encoder. And just that change overcame all their problems and they were able to machine the part and do with all the settings they originally wanted to achieve um, without having any e-stops. E that was almost two years ago and they haven't had a single e-stop in that time. So it's a massive turnaround in, in the reliability of that process. And are you practicing what you preach here at Renishaw with the encoders in your manufacturing facility? Yeah, definitely. We, all the machines that we order now all are fitted with, with Renishaw Fortis encoders in them. Uh, for that reason, it's not just because we want to, to actually use them ourselves, but it's because we want to, to um, get the best performance out of our machines. We do a lot of machining on aluminium at Renishaw, and so that, that capability is something which is very, very key to us. Corey, thank you very much for the in-depth review on the new Fortis encoders from Renishaw, their latest innovation.